Good afternoon. How's everyone doing? And if you can hear me, you can see me okay, just put it into the chat. Let me know that you're here. Let me know where you're joining me from. I love to know where is everyone joining us from. And if you can see my screen, you can hear me okay. Put it into the chat, let me know. <clears throat> good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Where are you joining me from? Hi, everyone. Hey, Adam. Hey, Andy. Hey, Richard. Thank you for putting into the chat. <clears throat> You hear, you see me okay? See the screen all right? <clears throat> Perfect, fantastic. Thanks for that. <clears throat> I'll give it a minute or two before we get started. And as everyone streams in, hey guys, if you can put it into the chat, let me know where you're joining me from. I like to see, I just love to see the different places that are reaching out towards. Hey, Soren. Hey, Silly. KL. Fantastic. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. If nothing else to do, just to put it in. Let me know. Hey, all four. <clears throat> Today, we are going through the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. I will be doing the live trading analysis. Quite a number of news to be had for this week. So it'll be quite an interesting session. Hey, Jojo. Hey, Felicity. Good day, Dom. How are you all doing? <clears throat> all right, one minute and we'll get going. Wow, we're really getting everyone from everywhere. Fantastic. Keep it coming, guys. <clears throat> all right, um, let's get started. So keep it coming. Where are you joining me from? Um, well, we'll be doing today the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass with Tickmill. We'll be doing a live trading analysis. So what I'll be doing is I'll be sharing with you my thoughts, ideas, opinions about the market. I will be going through some fundamental news, right? We do have some news to be released uh, for this week. So I'll be going through the fundamental news first, and then I'll be looking into the charts to ident identify some possible trade setups. All right. But... One quick disclaimer is that the material provided is for informational purpose only and should not be considered as investment advice. The views, information, or opinions expressed in the text solely belong to the author and not the author's employer, organization, committee, or any other group or individuals or companies. All right. So what it means basically is that I will be sharing with you some possible trade setups. If you do jump into those trades, Please make sure you do your own um, analysis. Make sure you do your own due diligence. Check your leverage. Check your margin. Make sure you're not over trading. All right. Um, from my experience, I do with helping a lot of um, coaching a lot of traders. The thing that harms most trading accounts is not so much a bad trade or a bad strategy. It's more about over trading and over leveraging. Right. So those are the things you have to pay very key attention to. With that said, quick introduction. My name is Jin Dao. I am one of the traders here. Um, I do my own trading. I full-time trader. I used to manage a multi-million dollar, um, $20 million trading account. Uh, right now, you know, we are running the trading strategy clinic. You know, I'll be happy to help you if you put in any questions. You know, if any questions, put it into the chat. Let me know. Let me know if you have any questions. I will give you my views in terms of a trading strategy. Right? You need any help with your trading strategy? I can help you with that as well. And then with that, I'll also share with you how I look at the markets, how I trade, what I do. All right. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Contact details are there. And let's get started. Take that away. Oops. And here we go. All right. So I approach the markets a little bit differently from what I normally see people do. 
Uh, for me, I look at the fundamentals first. I look at the news. I look at what could happen, where prices could be heading towards first. And then after that, I look into the charts to tell me if, for example, I expect prices to be moving up based on the news, based on the fundamentals. And charts are showing me that it's moving towards the downside. What I do, I'll sit out, I'll wait until the charts bounce or look like it's bouncing towards upside. Then technical is pointing up, fundamentals pointing up, I'll look to um, buy it towards upside. All right, so I tend to look for fundamentals first as an overall direction, and then I'll look into the charts for the timing of when to get into the news or when to get into the trade. All right. Okay, I see a question there, Sean. Um, I'll get to that shortly. So what we've had today, all right, let me get through what we had today. Um, we had the Swiss CPI data, right? CPI data month on month. It was a 0.3% expected, 0.1 came out at a minus 0.2. So CPI is an inflation data. What it means is that we do see, or right now we're seeing a bit of a slowdown in inflation growth in the Swiss franc. So that's why we actually saw here, if you look to the charts on the Swiss franc, oops, let me just clear all that out, too many scribbles. We actually see the Swiss franc pushing towards the upside, right, on release of the news, because, hey, if inflation is slowing down, less likelihood of further rate increases to come from the Swiss National Bank. That's why we see that weakening of the Swiss franc pushing it towards the upside, you know, towards that nine, almost towards 0 0.99 right now. Okay, so just based on that news alone, again, just based on that news alone, what I'm looking for here on the US Swiss franc H1 time frame is whether price could come up to test that 0 0.9965 resistance level. Okay, I'll zoom it out a bit for you. You can see that overall move, right? If I zoomed out further, you can see that we have a bit of a diagonal trend line supporting price towards the upside, it's hit and bounced quite strongly. Okay, so we first we see that push towards the upside with the news indicating that we might see you know, less likelihood of the Swiss National Bank um, increasing rates further. So because of all that, and also I'm looking for this to push up, previous swing low here, right? Resistance level there, now that is broken towards the upside, what you could be looking for in this case will be whether we could see that move upwards, right? That move upwards towards that 9965 level. Could it retrace? It could come back down, test this level and bounce back up. But I find that this is quite a key support level there. And also if we did a bit of a Fibonacci towards the downside, you will see that this key level coincides with that 61.8 FIB level retracement level. Okay, so now that it's pushing up, we're looking for that continuation towards the upside there. Okay, a little bit late on this move already, just because the news did happen 2.30 p.m. GMT plus 8, it's 5.30 right now, so a couple of hours ago. So with that, uh, might be a bit late. You can see that it's almost a one is to one risk reward ratio towards the upside. Don't rush in, but still could be um, pushing higher. Yes, this is the, uh, Richard, this is the US Swiss franc towards upside there. Okay, so we're looking for this to push higher due to that news that happened there. All right, so we do have a whole bunch of PMI numbers releasing uh, just before this session, but you can see not big changes here happening. So not a lot of um, impact on the prices so far. Make next thing to pay attention to is the US manufacturing PMI tonight, GMT plus eight at 10 p.m. All right. Um, looking at this, it was a 52.8, expected to be a 52.5. 
all it needs to do is stay within that 52 range. Above 50 for PMI data, above 50 indicates an expansion, below 50 indicates a contraction. Okay, so what we're looking for is for the US ISM manufacturing PMI to stay above 50 in the expansionary phase, which could lead to some dollar strength coming back into play. Okay, why so is because you can see no other news. And if I look into tomorrow as well, not a lot of news to be had for the US at this point. So this is quite key. And also, so see, I look at the fundamentals first, then I jump into the technicals. Looking at a technical analysis here on the dollar, on the dollar index, what you will notice is that it's found a good support here at about this 111.58 level, all right, 11.58 level, all right? But also that it's been trading within that range from the previous swing point between 112.62 and 111.58, okay? So it's been trading within this range. What needs to happen if we do see stronger PMI data for the US tonight, I wouldn't be looking for anything until I see the dollar index break above this resistance level. It needs to break above that resistance level before we could think of further dollar strength towards the upside. How much further could it go? The first level here on the dollar index would be about that 113.55 level. You can see previous swing high and previous swing low level. Okay. So I'm looking for the dollar. If it continues to push towards the upside, break above 112.62, could it push towards 113.54 or 55? All right. So, and also that you can see at this point, if I had a Fibonacci level in there, those levels coincide, it's a 61.8 level right there. So we're looking for this to break above that 23.6, break above that resistance, that horizontal resistance, and possibly climb towards 61.8. Okay, so I'm, that's what I'm looking for on the, dollar index for it to first climb up, break above this point and possibly move up towards that 113.55 level. Okay. Um, with that said, things to pay attention to, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow we do have the Aussie cash rate. Aussie cash rate was a 2.3% expected another 50 basis point increase, big, another big increase to come from the RVA, 50 basis points to bring interest rates to a 2.85%, right? To a 2.85%. Given that we expect this already, given that it might be priced in, what you should do is pay attention to the RBA rate statement, all right? Why pay attention to the rate statement is because one of the things that is being considered is that the RBA, open that one for you guys, said for one last outsize hike before low or Governor Low slows tightening. So we're looking at or the commentary or the expectations is that another 50 basis points increase tomorrow and then possibly going to slow it down. No more 50 basis points. It might just keep going at 25 basis points after tomorrow, All right? If that does happen, right now you're thinking that we're looking at a 50 basis point increase tomorrow and then slowing it down. What could happen here on the Aussie dollar is that, I'll clear that out for now, All right? It is currently trading at 0 0.6440, right? If we do see... Aussie dollar rate increase 50 basis points tomorrow and then a slowdown. I'm anticipating that we might see some downside on the Aussie dollar, right? It's a bit counterintuitive that they did increase interest rates and we're looking for some downside. 
it might be priced in it might be a priced in scenario it might be um, that slowdown in future rate hikes that could cause this move towards a downside okay so things to pay attention to key oops let me just do that take that away for now key support level is right here at 0 0.6365 right 6364 or 6365 and a key resistance level at about 0 0.6526 or 0 0.6525 okay so we're operating within this range if you look at it just like that we do have a key level there at about 6425 a bit too many lines at this point what I'll be looking for here is that if we do see, if we do see further um, Aussie weakness because of that interest rate increase um, and then the slowdown, <clears throat> what could happen is that push towards that 0 0.6364 level or 0 0.6365 level. So I'm looking for that move towards that downside. All right towards that downside that could happen tonight if we do see um, the dollar st strength come back into play alternatively if we don't see that dollar strength come into play and let's say if we see dollar weakness right if we do see coming back to dollar index we see it hit and reverse from this point back within this range what could happen is the Aussie dollar could trade higher where it could trade higher towards that resistance level then I'll be looking for selling opportunities. So what you could be looking for is selling opportunity towards the downside, especially if it tests, I'll be key, keen to see it test that resistance and to sell it down, you know, something like that towards the downside. I've got one guy with his hand up. If you've got a question, put it into the chat, let me know. Okay. Um, okay. So with that said about the Aussie dollar for now, trading within this range, if tonight we do see it drop down towards that support level, I would be very careful about trying to sell it down with the news release tomorrow morning um, because, you know, Aussie dollar is at a historic low right now. So if you do sell it below this point, be extra careful. What I'll be more tempted to see will be, you know, if the Aussie dollar could test that resistance again, I'll be more happy to sell it down from that point, say about 0 0.65, below 0 0.65, you know, stop loss about a 30, 40 pips towards down upside, down, um, take profit at about 140 pips, a one is to 3.5 towards the downside there on the Aussie dollar. Okay. That's with the news tomorrow, um, depending on how it's going to move leading up to that news. So Sean had a question there, not profitable. I need a strategy to trade majors, gold and oil. Um, Sean, what kind of, what's your trading strategy at the moment? You know, how do you decide what kind of trades or what kind of entry? Do you, you know, put it into chat, do you, um, what's your, what's your method? What's your method so that you know I can help you with that? Okay. And while you type that up, I'll look at the next pair. Um, so we do have the Aussie at 1130 GMT plus eight to be released. 50 basis point increase interest rates. Uh, we do have the US job openings, but that doesn't usually move prices too much. Next big thing, is the New Zealand, right? The Kiwi interest rate decision. Again, another 50 basis point increase from 3% to a 3.5%, right? So we're looking at again, another 50 basis point increase and pay attention to the rate statement. So reason why we need to pay attention to the rate statement is because a lot of the current rate increases uh, have been signaled very early on. So this could all be priced in scenarios right here. RBNZ expected to announce eighth straight 
rise in OCR overnight cash rate. Pay attention. Um, they will continue lifting the OCR until it's confident there will be sufficient restraint in place. All right. So a lot more hawkish than the Aussie dollar. So on Wednesday, again, this is on Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. GMT plus eight, we have the Bank of New Zealand, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, looking to increase rates, 50 basis points. A lot more hawkish because they're not talking about slowing down rate increases, right? You're not talking about slowing down rate increases. So with that, then looking at the Kiwi dollar, clearing out those lines for now. Again, key support level at that 0 0.5566 level there. A key resistance is at 0 0.5, 7, 0 0.5751 or 0 0.5750. Okay. So those are the levels we're looking at, what we're possibly looking for. Again, if we see that dollar strength come into play later tonight or into tomorrow, what we could see is the Kiwi dollar trading towards the downside, All right? With the expected rate increases, with the expected rate increases, um, could be looking for a bounce, right? Because they're not talking about slowing down. They're not talking about um, looking for any potential um, slowdown in rates. Then we could be looking for a possible bounce off this support level i'll be looking for a bit of a repeat of what happened here right a bit of a repeat of what happened here i'll be looking to buy so i'll look i'll show you an example here i'll be looking for that okay so bounce off that support to push towards upside stop loss below that support level at about Five five zero point five five four six. take profit towards upside, towards the near-term resistance. You don't have to go all the way either. In this case, coming back again on Wednesday, what I'll be looking for is that bounce, right? I'll be looking for that push and then towards the upside of there. Okay, so I'm looking, I think that Kiwi dollar could trade within this range for an extended period of time, looking for it, come down, hit the support, and bounce towards that 5740 level. All right, so Steffi, I will get to US 30 shortly, maybe towards the end of the session, I'll get there. Um, Sean, okay, I'm focused on double tops and double bottom struggle with analyzing. All right, so Sean, um, double tops and double bottoms actually work very well, all right? It works very well. What kind of time frames do you look at it? Um, do you apply it onto? Because typically what I would suggest is that for double tops and double bottoms, especially in terms of chart patterns, um, I wouldn't go anything lower than the H1 time frame. So I'll stay on the H4, I'll look at it on the H1. Um, I wouldn't look at it anything else. I wouldn't look at it too small. All right, that's one. And then the second one is that you know, also understanding that as you look for double tops or double bottom levels or chart patterns, those are reversal patterns. Reversal patterns tend to have, I mean, counter trend patterns or counter trend trades can work, but they do have a bit of a, um, the odds are against them, right? Counter trend, 70% of the time, counter trend trades don't work or it works in a very choppy sense. So just you know, possibly add a bit of a trend following um, strategy to add on to your counter trend strategies. Okay, for example, you know, if we're looking in this case, you could see a bit of a top there, and then again another top there. So you could be looking at a double top pattern happening at that zero point five seven three zero resistance level anticipating that downside typically what you should be looking for is on to get in only when price breaks below that neckline right 
and price breaks below that neckline. So you're waiting, hit, form a second double top as it comes down, as it breaks below that point, then look to sell it down. In this case, you know, you will look to sell it towards that support level. What your trade should look like is something like that, about a 30 pip stop loss, about a 75 pip take profit, right? And then it comes down, comes very close, almost at that level, should be looking to get out of that trade. Okay, so double top, double bottoms can work. Um, I wouldn't try to, in this case, like if I see a double bottom here, I wouldn't look to buy it up because of that big significant downtrend on the Kiwi dollar. So I'll be looking for double tops for a continuation rather than a big reversal towards the upside. Okay, I'll show you one more example of a double top back to the US Swiss franc. This was a trade that I, I loved that I was sharing with another group um, previously. You can also see a double top here, one, and again, two, and then it breaks, only when it breaks that neckline. So we'll be, we were looking at, let me just take this away, right? Double top breaks that neckline. So we were looking for the downward move only below that point, stop loss about 30 pips again, take profit was towards this level here. All right, so take profit was towards that point. So again, double top can work, be extra patient, you know, needs to break that neckline. I think what a lot of traders tend to do is they'll find a double top, I'll zoom it in a bit, they'll find a top, bounce a top and then they sell almost immediately once it forms what happens is with a tight stop loss you get stopped out before it comes down again all right great i hope that helps um, another example there on the swiss franc was on h4 zoom back out you can see again that level there we had a top oops a top there and another top but this one didn't have a neckline it just went all the way down towards <clears throat> that key support level there all right so not always that neckline but you'll be looking for a break off a key level before you look to sell it down plus that double top <clears throat> okay um adam with a question my biggest challenge is how to enter the market and exit. If I apply Fibonacci, where do I put the mark? At what time frame? Okay, so um, Adam, I guess let me just bring on another chart here. So um, let me just clear this up. What you can be looking for is how do I enter exit the market? Um, Depends, right? If you're if you're more of a trend following, what I tend to do is look for first. I you know I look at the news, look for the direction, and then it need, for me it needs to break a level, right? It needs to break a level. For example, in this case, the U.S. yen, right? The U.S. yen can put this point here has been struggling, <clears throat> has been struggling to break, had been struggling to break above that 145 level, all right? You can see hit 145, turn down, hit 145, turn down, broke above. This was a big intervention by the Bank of Japan, came back up and so far stayed um, below 145. So in this case, if I went to the H1 time frame now, <clears throat> I'll be looking for it to, as it breaks above that 145 level, Right, move this up to 145 as a round number. Given that it's broken above, I'll be looking for that buying opportunity. I'll look to buy it up because it's broken above a key level. Okay. So you can look for um, entry points as it breaks above key levels, uh, exit points as it approaches key levels to get in or out of your respective trades. Does that make sense so far, Adam?
uh, just based on your first question, entering and exiting trades. Let me know. Okay, so if that works, then the next point is when to exit, right? Um, let's say, for example, you are looking to, you know, with Sean's example, we're looking to sell it down because of a possible, um, where was it? Double top. Where would I place the FIP on this pair? Um, okay, if so, yes. If so, if I enter on the lowest time frame, if I've analyzed on H4, um, if I've analyzed on H4 and H1. Okay, so what I would suggest is that if you're entering a trade, for example, based on the H4 time frame, <clears throat> <clears throat> if you're analyzing a trade on H4, then I would stay on H4. I wouldn't go down into a smaller time frame to look to enter a trade. Um, if you're looking to a trade on H1, then I'll stay on the H1 time frame to enter a trade based on the H1. So I think the confusion for um, in this case would be, you know, if I look at the US yen here on H1 time frame at this point. And then I went into the one minute time frame. You know, it started looking like it's pushing towards the downside or it looks like it's moving all around. Then you get a little, you might get a little bit confused. You might get um, you know, pushed in all different directions. So just be a bit careful with that. I would stay on the H1 time frame. And then look to whether I could, you know, get into a trade or to hold on to the next one there. Okay. So trade, but what I always love to say is trade what you see, right? Not what you think. So I would say trade what you see as into, you know, if you're looking on H1 here, I'll be looking to trade based on the H1 time frame only. Okay. Um where would I place a Fibonacci on this point? I would say that before we do that on the H1 time frame, if you did that, all right, so you have just going from this current point, this point here on the 29th to push towards the recent high. I would say that we got a FIB level at about 23.6 here. Nice round number support there. And then key level would be at about that 145.73 level at that 27.2 extension level towards the upside. Okay. If I did a key level from this point down, <clears throat> You can see that we pushed it towards the downside. That 78.6 was why we saw price fluctuate around this level, right? So we're looking for it to test this level, break towards the upside, back towards the 145.90 level. And then if it goes past that, we could see 147.40, okay? So how to place a fib always from that high to that low or, in the, or also from that low to that high point. All right. <clears throat> I have a couple of questions there. How do I use multi time frames for good entry? My entry isn't good at all through my setup would go in any directions. Okay. Again, you know, if you're looking at multi entries or multiple <clears throat> time frames, Bear in mind, you know, look for that. Um, you know, be clear whether you're looking for a trend following scenario or whether you're looking for a um, reversal scenario. All right. So it, I would say stick on one, only go one lower. Right. So if you're looking at, or oh, one up, I mean, if you're looking at entering a trade on an H1 time frame, check the H4 levels, check the H4 support and resistance levels. If you're looking at H4, check the daily time frame. If you're looking at anything less than H1, I would suggest stay on H1, right? I would suggest, you know, 
uh, most retail traders try to trade, you know, the 15 minute, the, eight, the M1 time frame. I would believe that most retail traders should stay on the H1 at the very lowest because it makes it a little bit easier to trade when you start looking into the smaller time frame, for example, the 15 minute. What happens is you get a lot of noise, big spikes, push up, and all the way all around. So it does tend to get a little bit noisy when you get into the small time frame. So stay on H1, look for setups, look for breakouts or retracements. Um, then in this case for Solomon, I would say that you know H1, looking at that point, then you look at H4, see what's the overall direction, right? So you're still looking, am I looking for the upward move to break above, or am I looking for that resistance level to hold and for the reversal back down again? All right, uh, Benson, it is it is recorded. It is recorded. Uh, do you use moving average or you do purely? I do use moving, I do use some moving average. If it gets a little bit, um, Let's say if it doesn't get as clear, but right now with the way the markets are moving, I think that, you know, just looking at the fundamentals, look at the overall direction, the fundamentals, the trend support resistance can actually be quite sufficient to identifying um, good entry levels already. All right. So on the Fibonacci, on the downtrend, I look for current low and vice versa, I look for uptrend. Yep, okay, let me show you an example here um, on the pound dollar. No, actually pound dollar is a terrible one. US CAD is a good one, okay? So the US CAD here, as an example, you'll be looking at that point. So the upward move, we look from the lowest point towards the highest point. So you always wanna look from the lowest to the highest point. If you had this drawn before, then you will identify that 23.6 level as a key you know, retracement level. And that would actually save you as price comes down, right? This is on the H4 time frame. as price comes lower, you can see it. Oh, let me get that properly. Comes down, hits that level. You know that it's a support level formed by the Fibonacci then it bounces back up, right? It bounces back up, back to the previous high point again. So you know that's a key resistance level there, right? You got a key resistance level there, and then you know that that's a good support level there because of the FIB level, right? Forming those two points. So now you have that range that the US CAD is trading between, and if it breaks above, then we have the next point at 1.4. Right? I wouldn't go all the way there. I would say 1.4 because if I went to the daily time frame, moving back, you can see at 1.4 was a key level that we saw a good bounce off from. Right? You saw that hit and that bounce, that swing high. And that's why at this point now, we're looking for that same move likely to trade within this range, but then we could see it bounce back up towards that point there. All right. Can you use FIB on a lower time frame, say 30 minutes, 15? You can. Uh, Steffi, you can. It does get a little bit messy. You can, but it just gets a little bit messy because um, in this case, if you look at 15 minute time frame, Right, it still works. You could do that towards the downside. I'll just clear out some lines. You can still do that towards the downside and you still identify your key levels, but it's not as strong as if it were on the four hour or even on the one hour time frame. You can see that move at 61.8. Price reacted very strongly at 61.8 again, right? So it does work. 
um, just that you tend to have levels that it might not work as strongly against. All right. Um, hi, Jivan. We'll get to Bitcoin and Ethereum. I have to do US 30 first, and then I'll get to Bitcoin and Ethereum. All right. Any other questions? Keep the questions coming. I'm enjoying it. Okay. So let's look at US 30 as requested by Steffi. Where's my US 30? Um, no. All right. Okay. So this one. Straight away, key level there, right? Previous swing. Let's zoom it in a little bit for you guys. So key level there. All right, and then key level here and here. So it's right now back at that level. So again, if we just did a fib level from this top to this point here you can see that it comes it's within this range at a previous swing low swing high pivot points here what i'm looking for what we would be looking for here is whether price can break above you can see that it tested and rejected came back down bounced off so whether price can uh, where is it? Test that 38.2 level and whether it's going to break above that point. All right. If it does climb up, it breaks above that 28,951 level, then I would say we could see it climb further towards that 50, which also coincides with that previous swing low of 29,000. So quite straightforward there um, on the US 30. All right. Um, can all of these work on indices such as the VIX? <clears throat> yeah, a bit can. Um, so, you know, these are all technical levels, so or technical analysis. So yes, it can work on the um, indices such as the VIX as well. All right. You trade the Fibonacci expansion from the minus 27.2 level. Could you please show me how you would do that? Um, let me find something. In this case, no, nothing there. It's ranging or uptrend. I would say, oops, oh, wait, let me just move that. I would say that it's ranging. So US 30, is it ranging or is it an up trend? Oh, wait, let me do something. I'm pressing something. Okay. Um, I would say that it's actually on a downward move. You can see that based on that, you know, big downward move, strong retrace, downward move looks like it's going to retrace again. So I would say that it's actually not on a um uptrend i wouldn't say it's an uptrend i would say that it's a retracement before possibly turning back down again so that's why i'm looking at that key level and also that key level where the price is going to go up to those levels and turn back down on that level and turn back down again all right <clears throat> So more downtrend, but currently retracing. Okay, let's look at the um, euro pound to start on the question of, where is it? The minus 27.2, oops. Here we go. Oh, actually, let me just check that again. Okay. I just I just realized that I was on the 15 minute on the US 30. So 15 minute uh, H1 on the US 30, H4 on the US 30. Let's redo US 30. I realized on a wrong time frame. Um, I would actually still say that we have a key level there. 
one th other thing to pay attention to on the US 30 is that we have that downward channel. All right, so what I would say is that it's possibly going to sit right across. This is a very key level. Right? If you went to the daily time frame, you can see the last time we were at this point was back in November 2020 or October 2020, where it broke down from resistance and turned down from this point. Okay, so that's why we're seeing a strong or somewhat consolidation at that level, but the downward channel is still quite strong. Even if we do see a bounce, it could test that point before turning back down again, but overall still towards the downside. All right, sorry about that. I didn't pay attention. I wasn't watching the 15 minute time frame. Still looking for it to react to that 28,850 level, looking still for that downside, you know, overall downward trend, looking for it to push lower. All right, so now back to the H4 time frame on the Euro pound. It's coming back down to this point right now. Key level at that eight seven. 8714, 8710 level, 870 actually, okay. I would say that based on this point here, I'll be looking for it to test towards the downside. Okay, so in this case, two ways to look at it. One is of that we have that big push towards the upside, what we could be looking for is whether the euro pound is going to drop towards that 127 level. All right, where is it? Um, where the price could come down, break below that support, and hit 127. If it does hit 127, we could see some push back up towards that 0 0.870 level. Okay. And then if we did that move towards the downside, again, that's at that 27% expansion level. You could see this. So I'm looking for price to push down. If it breaks below that support level, first move will be, or first expectation is whether price could drop towards this point. If it drops towards this area, we could actually see it bounce back up and you can see that the last time it came close we saw that push towards upside as a key so this will be a key support level at this point here all right makes sense so i'm looking for that push um, down towards that level before a quick trade back up hope i see a question there soren great fantastic um next one on the dex 30 there we go wait where's my dex um i don't see it i used to have it there okay there we go again um clear out some lines at this point i'm trying to just find where is a good support level? You can see that in this case, we have big swing low here at 11,464. It's currently at 12,000. So now back to the H4 time frame. in that consolidation at a 12,000 level. But what you want to pay attention to, is that we do see that channel towards that downside. So I do like that channel. Okay, uh, what I would say is that what happens at this point, right? Pay attention to what happens at that top of the channel. Right, top of the channel or even that 23.6 level. Okay, so I do think that we might see further downside but what could happen here is a bit of a um kelvin i just did i just did euro pound we just did euro pound as in 
<laughs> okay, I'll get the euro dollar. No worries, got me confused for a moment. <laughs> okay, um, so DAX 30, what we could see is that top of the channel resisting it a little bit, resisting the push towards the upside, and then turn down. All that also heavily dependent on what could happen on the euro dollar. So I'll look at that shortly. If it does break out of that channel, if it does break out, what we could also see is that if it does break out, it could possibly climb towards a 12,222 level, right? Or 217 level and then turn back down again. So resistance level, I would say, is top of that range and also possibly towards that 23.6 retracement level, like that. Back down again. And then if it breaks past that point, we could see it test that 11,464 support level. Mm -hmm. All right, bear in mind 11,464, very key level back in October 2020. We saw, oops, we saw it drop very strongly, hit that level and bounce. Actually, to be more specific, 11,517, right? So hit that level and bounce very strongly. At this point, I would say, you know, a key level right there. Just be careful when it comes close to that point. <laughs> Hope I answered your question there, Elvin. Then let's look at, um, nope, not that, uh, Euro dollar. Okay. Euro dollar doing very well. All right. Um, H4 time frame. Okay. Euro dollar doing very well, pushing towards the downside, trading within that consolidation at this point. So, what I'll be looking for, you can see firstly that downward. It's at that 38.2 level. It's at that 38.2 level. So we're looking for it to reject. And you can see that. I'll zoom in a little bit. It's came up, tested close to that 50% Fib level, turning down. We're looking for this to close lower. Wouldn't look to get in right now because I've seen, you can see that the last time it tested this point, it bounced back up. So I would say that I would only be looking to sell down. I'm still looking for downward move. Wouldn't be so adventurous to look to buy it up yet. I'll be looking for downward moves below, below 0 0.9750, right? So about, yeah, it grows 0 0.9750, stop loss, about a 60, 70 pips, take profit, I would say, you know, all the way towards the downside with a risk level at that 0 0.97 level, right? So there's a push towards the downside. If it breaks there, especially if it breaks below 0 0.97, we can see big downward move, but there'll be a point that you want to consider whether you want to, you know, close out the trade or manage it or move your stop loss towards break even. What I would do, Look for price to come down towards 0 0.97 and stop loss goes to break even and then look to try and trade it, hold on to that trade towards the downside. All right. How's that, Kelvin? Is that good? With that, any last ones, last questions? Oh, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let's do that one. Yeah. It's actually not too interesting there on the cryptocurrencies at this point. Hey, Jamilu, how are you doing? Didn't notice you were there. All right. Um, yeah, Bitcoin, Ethereum, not too interesting. Still well within that range of that 18473 and that tighter range of 19. 583. I think it's going to trade within this range. There are big breakouts, but you can see that those breakouts are usually not sustained. Big break, came back in again. Big break, tried to break out, came back in again. So I think that, you know, Bitcoin looking to stay between 18,473 and 19,583. 
Ethereum, same thing, same story. Again, between 12.43 and 13.43, right? So between those points, there hasn't been any big news, any, any uh, big stimulus events to push um, Bitcoin or Ethereum in either directions. That's why we see it um, in a big range at this point and likely to stay within those levels um, unless we see massive shocks from the US FOMC regarding interest rates decisions. Those tend to have some impact on the uh, cryptocurrencies, but you know, likely to stay within this range for the time being. No big reason for it to drop below the key levels and also no big reason for it to rise too strongly either. All right. And then lucky last, oops, uh, not that one. lucky last on pound. You guys know what happened on the pound dollar so far? So that happened. First point was with that on Friday, two weeks ago where they introduced a tax cut, where the UK government introduced a tax cut and we saw you know, investors get worried about whether the bank or the UK is going to be able to finance the debt. We saw pound dollar drop so significantly all the way down towards the key support level at 1.0390. That move towards the downside, big volatility, and then as on Thursday last week, we saw the Bank of England intervene, right? They said that we're going to buy bonds at whatever scale necessary to um, help markets recover. And that's why. So that news there, that was intervention by the Bank of England. And then that's why we saw price push back up, right? Price push back up was a support level now a resistance level okay at this point right at one point at this one point one two four zero level wait and see is it going to break above or is it going to turn back down all right if it breaks above towards the upside then the next key resistance level would be at about that 1.1430 level, just because we got a swing low and a swing high there. So 1.1430. Or if it rejects, we could see it turn back down with that level there. Firstly at 1.1050, and then the next one at 1.1, 1.090 uh, there. Okay, so I'm either looking for in this case, that push towards that resistance if it breaks out or move this a little bit across if a rejection of this resistance level back down towards the 109 level what i think is likely to happen with the way the bank of england is intervening we could see that push towards the upside um, that continued recovery if we don't see any further surprises from the US, from the dollar index, you know, if dollar index doesn't get too strong, then we could see that recovery push back up again. All right, um, Jivan, I'm not sure when's the next class. Um, check out the, I'm sure you get an email out with the next class coming in, <laughs> all right? So with all of that said, we do have a lot of news. Last part is I wanna remind you all that with the Aussie cash rates, with the Kiwi interest rates decision, OPEC meetings, we have ISM. The main thing you're going to pay attention to as well is this Friday, we have a non-farm payroll release. It is a little bit too early to predict what could happen on the non-farm payrolls. We just need price to move on a little bit further before we do some planning on non-farm payrolls. But this should be something that you pay attention to US non-farm payrolls this Friday likely to have some high volatility um, on the dollar as well. All right. With that said, I hope you had a good session. Let me know. Did you have a good session? Did you find it useful? Is there any feedback? 
I'll be happy to take it all on board as we come towards the end of the session. How did you find it? You're most welcome there, Jumilu. Fantastic. Great. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I hope you had a good session. Remember, trade well, trade safe, and take care now. Bye-bye.